Hello and welcome. I did a video recently talking about how to use the scan function and I had a few people asking me about how to use other Lambda helper functions. So today I'm going to talk a little bit, again through the medium of a, of a uh, Excel eSports case, uh, about how to use reduce and map, uh, which are two other handy Lambda helper functions. So simply put, reduce lets you apply a function multiple times and map lets you apply a function to multiple inputs. So let's take a quick look. The syntax for reduce, you have an initial value an array and a function. And so the idea is you take the initial value and then one at a time you take each of the values in the array and you apply the function to the initial value and the array. Uh, and then you just return the final output. So it's the exact same thing as scan, except that instead of returning every step along the way, you just return the final value. So here's a simple uh, example. Let's say your initial value is zero and your array is these numbers three, four, five, six, and your function is add the initial value to the next value. So here you add 0 and 3, you get 3. Then here you add the next value from here and your previous output value, 3 plus 4, you get 7. 7 plus 5, you get 12. 12 plus 6, you get 18. Uh, and that's just a kind of simple way to do uh, so if, if it was scan, it would output all four of these. Reduce just outputs the final value, 18. Again, obviously, you know, here you can just sum, but just trying to kind of establish the principles for now. I'll show you a more interesting use case in a minute where this function gets more complicated. Um, another kind of simple example here, uh, initial value is competitors, uh, and then we want to kind of gradually append each one of these to it. Uh, so the function we're applying is just text concatenation with a space in between. So first it's just, uh, you can't even see it here, first it's just competitors alpha, then competitors alpha beta, alpha beta gamma, alpha beta gamma delta. Uh, so that's, that's the basic idea with reduce. Now let's talk about map. The idea is map. You just have uh, one in one or many input arrays. So I've just I've listed it here as though there are kind of three uh, three options. But really, you can have any number of input arrays as long as they're all exactly the same size. And the idea is that you will take the first element of each of those arrays and apply your function to it. Then you'll take the second element of each of those arrays, apply your function to it, and so on. So here in this simple example, we've got names, categories, and favorites. So in other words, Sarah's favorite color is Ikru, Aditi's favorite animal is Emu, Ivan's favorite book is Emma, and Freya's favorite function is Lambda. Uh, and so here we can use map to, uh, to combine all those together. So now, what is the difference between this crazy lambda-ness and this straightforward function? Well, that is the language in which you have to write functions to put them into map or to put them into reduce. So here I've just shown the function in green in, in kind of simple form. It's just, you know, this cell plus this cell, or this cell concatenate with that cell, or, you know, slightly more complicated here, but still just concatenating. Uh, but so for these things to work, you need to describe the function with a lambda. Um, I think Lambda is very intimidating um, because, you know, it has its roots in, like, advanced computer science theory and that kind of thing. Uh, that, like, that's why it's called Lambda. But Lambda just means an anonymous function, the function that takes this and does that. So, in other words, if you want the function that takes two numbers and adds them together, uh, then you write that as Lambda, meaning the function that takes. And then you write the first thing it takes, so we just call it number one. Then the second thing it takes, we'll just call it number two. And then the thing, sorry, I'll just scroll up so you can actually see it. Uh, then the thing that you do with them, which in this case is number one plus number two. So, you know, looks a little scary, uh, but that's uh, once, once you get used to that mental shift, it's very easy to use. So now let's go and apply a little bit. Uh, so I'm looking at this, uh, this case uh, from the Excel World Championships uh, it's by Harry Gross. And the idea is you've got a garden Let's just jump down to the, one of the more complicated ones. You've got a garden with tulips and sunflowers uh, and some unplantable squares. Uh, and you have this operation, which is a pivot that you apply initially just to a, a sort of little cross like this and then to a bigger shape like this one here. Uh, and within the pivot area, you change all sunflowers to tulips and all tulips to sunflowers. Um, and you have to apply this in various different ways. But th this just seemed like a good use case for, uh, for map and reduce. So... Right now, because I want to focus on map and reduce, I'm just going to say I've made some lambdas earlier that we can use. If there's time at the end of the video, I'll explain those, but that's kind of not the priority thing. So I have a lambda. So here, step one. Uh, well, so step one is just counting the number of sunflowers. And we're not going to worry about that. Step two, or level two, is you apply one pivot. Uh, so I have a function that applies one pivot. It's called pivot. Uh, and it takes the input addresses. It takes the initial flowers. 
it takes the pivot address, which is now hidden under here, but it's that one, and it takes the distance. And in this case, the distance is just one. In other words, how how far from the pivot do you need to be uh, to be how close to the pivot do you need to be to be affected? And the reason there's that parameter there is because when we get to level two, we can just crank up the distance by one. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, and sorry, I can't put that in just this one cell because that gives an array of outputs. So let me just put this over here for a second. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's see. If we pivot on C1, then we should be able to see that what's in C1. Yes, uh, the tulip in C1 has turned into a sunflower. The tulip in C2 next to it has turned into a sunflower. And then let's see, the one above it would be B1, which is not affected because it's an X. Uh, and then the, sorry, the question you need to answer is, how many sunflowers would there be? Uh, so let's just bring this back over here. And we just want to know how many sunflowers. So we can say sum minus minus uh, pivot equals S for sunflower. And that'll give us the answer. And we carry it down. Oops, sorry, I did not lock. So let's try again with locking lock, and then we carry it down, and we're good. So now, level three, we want to consider, uh, we're trying to plant the most tulips with exactly one pivot. Uh, you must make a pivot, and you can select anywhere to put it. Uh, remember that you cannot pivot on a cell where nothing is planted. So, in other words, here we have to consider all the different places that we could pivot. This is a perfect application of map. In other words, for, for all this array of input values, we want to figure out if we pivoted on that, uh, then how many, whatever the question is, how many tulips would we end up with? So uh, let's just do it over here. So we'll say map. And now we have, you have to make a pivot, uh, but you cannot pivot on the X's. So I could just say, you know, my input array is all the addresses, but to deal with that case, I'm just going to say filter uh, my, in, my addresses where this is not equal to X. Um, so that's my input array, and then what do I want to do with each one of those addresses? I want to say, give me the function that takes an address and then does this stuff to it. And what is this stuff? It's pivot. Uh, the addresses is going to be this set up here. Uh, the initial flowers is going to be this set here. Uh, the pivot address is going to be that value here. So I've said, you know, for each address in this input, so I'm going to just put the address here, uh, and then the distance is going to be one. Uh, so that gives me the pivot, but what I want is the number of tulips. Uh, so then we just wrap this in sum of minus minus this is equal to t. And close, 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 close. Uh, oh, sorry. And then I need to take the max of those uh, because that gives me a bunch of different values. So here, I mean, this this may still feel complicated to you depending on where you are in your Lambda journey, but compared to the, the total complexity of what needs to be done, uh, this is this is a kind of a much simpler way to to apply this to all all the possible inputs. Uh, so then level four uh, is a good use case for reduce, which is um, we want to apply a pivot on a whole series of different squares one after another. Uh, so here we're going to say reduce. Our initial value is going to be the initial set of flowers. And then our array is going to be the array of inputs here. And sorry, I need to lock this. Lock. <coughs> uh, and then our lambda is going to be the function that takes... Uh, so for, re for reduce, your function needs to take two values. One is uh, the... Uh, I guess I'll just call it so far. Uh, the accumulated value so far. Uh, and then the next, call it next piv, the next pivot in this case, but just the next value from the array. And then you do some stuff with that. And what we do with that is going to be pivot. Uh, the addresses is just going to be this and percent this. <coughs> That'll just give us an array that is A1, B1, C1, D1, etc. A2, B2, etc. Uh, then the flowers is going to be so far. So that'll start off with this initial configuration, and then it'll be the previous output at each step after that. Then uh, next pivot, and distance is one. And then again, so that'll that'll give us a final output, and we want to convert that into how many tulips are there. So we just say sum of minus minus this equals t. And that carries on down. Uh, and then we can apply for level five, you have to do the same thing except a bigger grid, a bigger range of pivot, and a bigger uh, list of inputs. But actually, the logic for this 
setup is almost identical. So we can just take this, bring it down here. Uh, so now our new starting values is this bigger grid block. Uh, our new list of pivots is this. Um, and then our new addresses is this block and this block. Uh, and then our new distance is two. And the final question, we're interested in how many sunflowers. So let's make this an S. And does it work first time? Oh, it does. Amazing. Beautiful. Um, okay, so that's that's basically it. That's a kind of simple use case of uh, of applying a uh, thingy, of applying reduce to apply a function over and over again, or applying map to apply a function to lots of different values. So, so far we're only at 11 minutes, so I'm going to give a quick explainer of the functions that I made. So let's just take a look. So uh, it builds up, I don't, where did dice and pips come from? Uh, okay. Those were not there before. Never mind. Uh, so there's four functions. Uh, there's colnum, ronum, swap, and pivot. So colnum, first of all, uh, we want to deal with um, we want to deal with uh, these addresses. Now, I I wrote a simple version of this because uh, we never get into uh, multiple letters, um, and so uh, that that lets the logic for this be simple. So here, I just want for an array of of input addresses, I just want to get the column number, uh, and so here we're just saying, uh, oh, and yeah, I, I had a an additional thing to deal with the x's. Um, I'll explain that in a second. But so we're just taking the code of the address, which means the the ASCII code number of the first character in the address, uh, which is 65 for a capital A, 66 for a capital B, and, and so on up in increasing numbers, minus 64. And so that just gives you the address, uh, sorry, the column number. So here, all these A's become column one, all these B's become column two, all these C's become column three. Simple. Um, then a similar thing for row number, and here again, I just use the fact that uh, there's only ever one letter. So I just said, I think mid uh, mid of the input uh, two, two, and then put a minus minus in front of that to, to turn it into a number. Um, so then the next thing I did was, was just a swap function. Uh, and swap just reverses uh, S and T. So this, let me just bring this over here. So the T turns into S, S turns into T, uh, X remains X. Um, and that is, again, just super simple. Uh, I did it as if the input is x, then x, otherwise substitute st uh, with whatever was in there and replace it with blank. So in other words, if it was an s, you replace the s with blank and you're left with t. If it was a t, you replace the t with blank and you're left with s. Um, so that just swaps. And then the, the main work, obviously, is this pivot function. Uh, so let's grab that and bring it out here. <coughs> so... A lot going on here, but so the inputs are the addresses, the flowers, the pivot address, uh, and the distance. And then we're interested in uh, figuring out. So first of all, we want to figure out: Are we on a square we can pivot? Um, so we're going to check where the address matches the pivot address and where the flower is x. Do we have any values? And the reason I did it this slightly odd way, rather than just an x lookup, is because I wanted it to work both here, where everything is laid out in a single row, but also down in the later levels where there's a grid. So you can't, you know, X look up on here because it's 2D. Uh, so I did it this slightly odd way instead, but this is basically just a way of saying, is the pivot address an X? If it is, then we just return the flowers, don't change anything. If it's not, then we want to figure out, is, is each square close to the pivot? And the way we do that is by saying, take the row number of the full set of addresses and the row number of the pivot, take the difference of those and the absolute value. Uh, so in other words, let's say here, the pivot is here. So then the absolute value of the difference in row number is zero here, it's one here, it's one here. If we went further down, it would be two, 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 or sorry, two, three, four, it'd be two, three, four, and so on. Uh, take that, you add it to the absolute value of the column difference, and then you compare that sum to the distance. So you can see in the shape of this pivot here is the things where the row distance and the column distance from the pivot added together are less than or equal to one. And if you look down at level five, <coughs> it's the same thing. You're saying that where the sum of the row and column distances is less than or equal to two. And then you just say, if it meets that condition, then give me the value from swap of flowers. <coughs> Otherwise, give me the value from flowers. Uh, and that's that's the basic idea, and then you can apply that to to every level. 
Um, is there anything worth? I guess let's just do bonus three. The rest are, are somewhat tangential to this. So for bonus three, uh, just instead of having the the list of addresses from there, you want the full list of addresses, and we have the full list of addresses here. So put that there, and then the output we're interested in tulips instead of sunflowers. So just change that to T, and that checks out. All right, managed to keep it relatively short today. Uh, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you next time.